Um, I think like this chapter will probably go with the two next chapters and the author mentioned them a lot. I have not read the two next chapters, so yeah. I can't say, mm. but uh, apparently like they should be related. Um, I like the authors at a higher level, the authors like is mentioning, um, so are all of you this kind of meta programming? which basically mean you can program inside of the argument of a function. I mean, inside of like the, the expression exactly, that's gonna call the function. And the authors is basically telling like, it's powerful, but it can be dangerous. And it's pretty much against some of the use that have been done, which I disagree. Uh, in the tidyverse, because I think, uh, yes, it's make debugging maybe a bit harder. I 100% is behind that. Sometimes it's super tricky to debug that. Uh, but I think make if when it's made correctly, um, it's greatly enhanced the data analysis part of it. Like, for example, like today I was like, uh, doing some quick group buy and stuff like that. I mean, it's not a group buy, but like if I wanted to do that with base R, we'd have to do a split, then map, or I apply mm -hmm. my the result of my split. Could be better, I agree. Uh, and I still want to practice a bit this workflow, but sometimes uh, using yeah, it's the, this non-standard evaluation and the fact that you can program on the call of the function is very powerful and uh, very expressive also, I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, well, but that was the other point of view. I still think he's correct by saying like, it's powerful, use it when you well understand it. I have still to progress in understanding it. <laughs> But I think it's open effectively interesting part. I will say especially when debugging also uh, and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, so that's what we're gonna see. Um, a bit of like one one first example that I like is uh, that we can run uh, is the plot example, right? And as you see probably badly here, we have sec x here and not the huge, uh, if I print sec x mm -hmm. in the console, uh, it, it's not producing that. Meaning, mm -hmm. Meaningful that error are some way of deciding what to decide to print, et cetera, et cetera. And this is basically what we're going to see with what is in an evaluated and what is an expiration. OK. So expiration are close to statements. And I have not very well understand the difference between them. But the author does not like, he's kind of using expression parenthesis statement. And for me, a statement is something like, it's more like do something. Hmm. And mm -hmm. that's uh, a statement. But uh, like, let's say like, but, and it's, it's probably like, for example, I can say multiple expression can be part of a statement. I don't know, like, uh, so I went with close to statement, but I'm not computer science savvy enough to know the the correct lingo. Yeah. Inside of R, it, I mean, the author divide them in two groups, which are the simple expression. That's basically constant and name. Let's say one, two, three, pi maybe. I don't know if pi is a constant or is it a name? And the name is like, for example, Bob Tech, take the value of one to 10 or Bob uh, is a function that do X plus times something. So this is the name of the function. And then the compound expression is just like more than one. So you have like one simple expression and you add plenty of them. The example is giving is like, uh, like for example, you have a function that have like a certain number of elements and all of that is an expression F, et cetera, et cetera. So this is like at at a glance, but um, I like this is like maybe one negative stuff should I say about these chapters? 
He's like, he's opening the door, but uh, you still kind of, okay, no, what, what does it allow? Why, what, what's, what's, um, I mean, I understand what it can do in the programming space when you want to build stuff, but I do not have enough background to understand it in a broader context. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I do wish I knew uh, more about how languages that don't have, uh, what what is it, non-standard uh, evaluation or whatever? Python, for example. Cases. You can't do that yeah, in Python. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, Python, you will need to, to do a bunch of stuff too. That's why sometimes it, yeah, it's uh, like it, Python can be very verbose in the data, data analysis because like you are like doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. So inside of R, like you have like basically three type of language objects in R. You are the name we, we have already seen. Uh, that's uh, in the sense, but like then you have a call and the call can re record like multiple stuff. Uh, like this is a good example, like the, the call, the sinus and pi divided by two. And then you have an expression which uh, can represent a sequence of as a call or uh, I mean, as a like simple or compound expression. This is an expression. Um, so here, like, it's just like, uh, it's quite of tricky because like when you do like, for example, these quotes, uh, it's, it's, it's basically printing spam, but if you do, um, if you ask for like the class, well, we're going to get the name. This is like, and if you have to type of it's, a, it's a symbol and the book like just go very fast on that. Like I think it's just a note uh, in the mm -hmm. chapters, but um, so why this one is a symbol? Why this one is a language? Uh, I, I guess this one I understand because it's a uh, it's it's basically like it's it, it's it's um it's a call. It have like F and X. X is probably the name, and F is also uh, a name. By the way, I think. So you are like, uh, you have the compound expression here. An expression uh, could be a simple and compound expression. And this is a good example here. And I write a list like, uh, because like you can access it as a with simple brackets or double brackets. And if mm. we go with it, I think it's an interesting example to go through. Like the third one will be men x plus three i think and it will be right if i remember it's an expression and if for example i do uh, let's pass it to call no yeah because the first need to be straight um i, I sh yeah i can't i probably need to like to have like some name like the hmm. for example like the one and the min of something to pass it to the call, like the scene, for example, that you define here. Uh, but if you ask like for this one, you get it without the encapsulated as an expression. You get just like the, you can go one level below kind of issues. And um, so, and, and well, as we will see, you can access that. So you play a bit with example with that, which, I think it's interesting because like he's showing a bit, I think this relates all like the code is passed by the um, interpreters in some way. The part, and uh, and this is where like you see how it's interesting to have everything as a function and you give multiple example to that. Like you give the example with the loop, you give the example with, mm -hmm. and I, well, it was interesting to read, but uh, I do not have enough context for that. Um, as as a as a reader or like someone, mm. then like you give like the example like you can or you, in fact you can pass text as an expression which is like converting text like th like this for example, and um, um I, I will I will do a a, a smaller um a smaller test like um, let's see one uh, spam S I P M whoever's uh and maybe uh, uh no uh, min to differentiate that 
divided by two. Yeah, to change a bit this example and maybe fail. Where's my error? Oh yeah. Uh, no, what does it, it does not like? Uh, should be text. Let's see in the book where I fell. An expected symbol. So why it can't be passed? Let's see. Way to learn something. <laughs> well, pass. Oh, he can't pass. Um, he can pass. Um, I, I think this is the. This is it that he does not like. Oops, sorry. No. Nope. How is it formulated? Oh, because it should be like something that's uh, meaningful. This should be possible. Yes, because one spam uh, does not pass to any kind of air cards. And uh, so it's it's moved text, but the text obviously cannot be random or we get like an error. <laughs> That's, I guess, at multiple time. Uh, and, and at least like, and you can also like, and while we are, you can pass, right? so I, I could have write that as a file and probably like, and pass or probably have an argument. So instead of text, you can uh, link to a file. And obviously that's linked to the more no functions that's dpass, which is taking an expression. So for example, the body of a, uh, something that's inside of the body of a function and return as a text, which is like the one like we have used. So the easy way to do that is probably using quotes. Um, and this is a dpass, sorry, and quote uh, fdx should work. Yeah. And then we have it, as you see, as a string. Okay. So now you have to see a bit like how you can, uh, I, I didn't mention that, but yes, if you have like a string, you can convert it as a name and the call, uh, this is the call function, which is not to conform to the call function, which is another one. Uh, print does I can do that? No, I think it exists. No, or maybe it's not calls. Maybe help search. Uh, Wasn't it in base R? Well, I'm too lazy to find it, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so the call has combination of expressions. So if we have an expression here, as I have shown, you can uh, use single bracket or double bracket to as a go get. Um, if I do that, it is here, hack here. So the plus. Uh, maybe it's not the best example. I should go like maybe F the X um, something instead of like, because like, yeah, one plus X is basically that function. So this is, you get the upper level. And if you ask uh, to get the level down, you just get like the, the plus. Yeah. And you show like a nice example, or you can, blur kind of the past tree, like if you have a more complex uh, tool with a recursive call. And obviously the bracket and this double bracket have method for call, for the air call is the, um, is the class and replacement version. So I guess it should be something like that. Let's see if it's gonna work. And then if I ask the expression, uh, now uh, it will be like, it's a primitive, yes. And you are doing something completely differently. I mean, 
not exactly, but yeah. Um, cool stuff that I didn't know that are useful is like you can inspecting a function definition and usage. And I see that's useful in debugging when uh, the formal is giving the formal parameters. So yeah, it will be like X and Y and the body just returning like what's uh, the X plus Y, so this part. Uh, well, I can show you instead of saying it. So this is the formal parameters and the value of it. The default value, I assume like um, if we change that and then the body is just the this part, like usually inside of the, of the curly brace. And missing is interest is an interesting function because it works only like in uh, as a as a, as a fun function test, so so you can you can test it like yeah I have just test with nothing and it returns true, and if I do um, let's see, I kind of I didn't play too much with it but test. It's false because I probably have the uh, Y setup. Uh, and this is a good question. I will have assumed it was true because I didn't provide X, but is it false because I have the X setup? Well, we can test that easily. Oops, sorry. Oh, no, I want to stay here. Okay, let's see. Um, Let's build another function, Bob. That's just going to be function of x and just do x plus 2. Very interesting function. Uh, and if I test missing Bob, it's false. Oh, I didn't understand how it missing work. Because if you do missing with empty, a zero argument passed. So you need it, you need it to be inside of a function to work. But then uh, when something is missing, it's just a thing. I don't understand quite missing. Yeah, me neither. I need to take a closer look. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was good to know. Let's do that quickly because we have a bit of time and I nearly have completed. Missing value are represented in air. Yeah, but that's missing, not the function, no? Hmm. I want the function here. Oh, no, it's missing. Type of n, but this is not the missing function. And missing, this is missing air long, so. If I do maybe base, something like that. Hmm. No, missing from missing. Yeah, I need to be quoted. By the way, I didn't discuss that, but the author went into a long, uh, like a huge part was like, should you load library? And then like you have a code inside of library that converts the non-quoted argument to a quoted one thanks to substitute and as character. Oh, yeah, and that is important. Uh, I mean, it was interesting, but yeah. And I agree with him, like you should try to quote them or if you don't remember to quote them, you need to add characters um, mm -hmm. that you cannot load programmatically library, which can be, yeah. okay. Can I found missing here? Where is that function in? Hmm. I'll look it up on the internet. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see who's better, who faster. <laughs> Me with oh, base missing. It was base missing. Okay. Uh, can be used to test whether value was specified as an argument to a function. So missing x. X is a form. Oh, x. We need to pass a formal argument. Okay. So I guess uh, if I do form, uh, I need to define test like here, for example. Uh, 
uh, oops, what's weird stuff you have done? And yeah, four more with an S. No, I don't remember. Uh, yes, test. So this is giving me that. And if I do missing on that, probably not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Miss, did you have to call it maybe inside a function? Yeah, I think you need to call it inside of a function. Yeah, but this is just like a, let's see the example. Yeah, oh, here, yeah, you call it inside of a function, and if it's missing, it's gonna probably provide you like something. Yeah, so let's do some a, a more complex one so we can, I mean, complex. Hmm. And okay. Name is not perfect, but what can we do? Loaded, then test, miss, if I do y equal one just see argument one is missing yes and if i do x equal two for example it should return me but no let's define y as one and see if that change something That's weird. Oh, I didn't reload. I think we have to re re uh yeah the yeah, function re resend it. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, so we understand it. So it's it can only be passed inside of a function and gonna return like this error in this, which is nice. Yeah, that's useful for writing functions. Okay, I didn't go too much into the Cisco uh, and the match call. Which basically like the first one is returning um like uh is defining a function like bill, which is a function that has a lot of stuff going on. Uh X Y ellipsoid um ellipsis spam equal bob and and uh, that, let's let's start that way. And did I forget to close something? Yes, I need to define my function. Uh, print x print y. It's not the most intelligent one. <laughs> print Bam. No, what wasn't expected? Yes. Mm. Here. Up. Yeah. Why well, yeah, I'm passing that? Mm. Bill. So, Bill. Um, one, two. One to Bob, okay. And then if I do um, bill one to Bob, let's see if I can pipe into that because I'm lazy. <laughs> right. mm. Even in which argument? And I introduce. Let me see in the book. I think this is correct. Mm. So it's defined them inside of the function call. So that's the same. They need to be defined inside of the function call. So in my oh, example, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. I should also have that sys uh, call and by default is zero. Now if I do that, 
it's returned the um the the Cisco, and if I add also the match call, there's not a comma here. I'm just like saving space. It's return boss. Oh yeah, because I'm returning the last one. Uh, I I should print that. It start to be a bit messy. <laughs> uh, yeah, print me everything, please. And let's go back to the first one. And here it's correct. It's written with the argument. And you can obviously modify that or play with that. I think this this is useful, uh, especially when debugging or testing and. Uh, or like I think it's probably used also like, and this is the exercise that I did it down. But like the other points, like when you do a test, for example, like some some cross call worries, or I don't know, like the student test, it prints you a summary and it, it probably like grab uh, some information from that here and. I'm going to end with like a, a link to this <laughs> blog post that is funny. Uh, that use a lot of this technique in a funny way to uh, print a world and go into a, or you can quote mm. with a world, oh, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So you have a world that's printed a world and uh, and uh, you can use the function, the pass, use the thing, like, or you can just play with that uh, a lot. <laughs> And uh, yeah, this is an interesting way of like playing with it. And I will probably do it and et cetera, et cetera. So that was it for today. I don't think we have much to discuss uh, on that. Yeah, and we're, we're closing and we're almost done. Yeah, that's uh, currently we are. I think the next one is the big chapters. I don't know if you want to do it. Um, I don't know, probably not. Uh, unless I, I'm fine. Right I think if we both can't do it, maybe uh, yeah, I don't know. That's big. It's 30 pages, I think. 30 something. I can, I'm fine doing it, but I would probably like it's probably like big kind of today. I'm really, yeah, that, notes. yeah, uh, that's that's fine. Yeah, because I, I just might not have time. I think both me and Emma are a little time, uh, yeah, that's time fine. squished. Yeah. But um yeah, what a... yeah, if if I need to remember a bit of like if I have to summarize these chapters, I will say like I think it's a nice introduction of it, but I'm still a bit don't, yeah. uh I don't I, I, I'm lacking some other like computer science stuff to know where generality or I'm lacking use cases. I mean, the author provide example where you should do exercise and learn some of the use cases. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I would see. I would say. Yeah, but it's, it's much better than uh, you know any other deep dive into R I've seen on on this subject. Yeah, um, I mean the yeah. advanced R I think is good too. Uh, yeah. yeah, I would have to do that later. Um, but yeah, we are good, like nearly down. Uh, and I, I guess in two weeks we can be down. And the last week, like the lazy evaluation is very small, but we can also use it like to do like a bit of recompilation of what we have learned. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think that's good. So I envision it. Um, yeah, that sounds good. Well, I will free you early so you can do other stuff. Uh, yeah. And uh, see you next week. Yeah, thank you so much. No worries.